Thanks so much uh, for, for joining us. I, I mean, the question everyone's asking is uh, what damage has the failure of WeWork, uh, the likes of Uber and Lyft, who are down significantly from their IPO price, done to the prospect for other potential IPOs? You know, in all candor, I don't think that the, those three IPOs, and in particular WeWork's failure, has a massive impact on the IPO market. I really think it's, the issues are much more specific to those companies. If you take a look at WeWork, Uber, and Lyft, they have some common characteristics, all three of them are extremely cash consumptive business models. They, they are not very profitable at this point in time and they are built on sort of the notion of build it and they will come. If you look at some of the IPOs that have in fact been successful, whether it's a Datadog, a CrowdStrike, a Zoom, these are companies that either are very close to profitability or are profitable or in some cases have been accidentally profitable for some period of time. And what it really shows you is that the appetite for public market investors centered around companies which can present to them a profitability horizon that's realistic as opposed to ones that are saying, look, we're going to spend, trust us, at some point there's going to be profitability. So to me it really shows a sense of uh, companies and, and the public markets really becoming much more discerning uh, about what they're seeing uh, offered up to them in these public offerings. Were you surprised then that Peloton got away successfully? Because I guess uh, it is one of the companies that might have fitted the other basket you just suggested, that it's a, a promise of profitability, but not for, for many years. Yeah, look, I mean, uh, at the end of the day, uh, management teams are responsible for convincing the public markets and investors that the profitability is actually there. And a lot of it depends on what the cost of customer acquisition is or the gross margins and the products that they offer. I think Peloton did get away with it. Uh, they got away with it probably because if you looked at the scale of uh, the lack of profitability that they had, it showed something a little more moderated than others, which if you ask certain investors, they feel maybe Uber or Lyft or WeWork may never be profitable. And obviously that's not a viable publicly traded company. So I think there is a, so a gray zone and some nuances, but the more you can show short-term profitability, profitability within the next 18 to 24 months after IPO, the more you have an appreciation from the investors that are going to be buying your stock. Profitability is certain one metric, certainly one metric that could be used. But of course, when you're just going public, investors or potential investors are limited to the financial information that they have. And it seems like private valuations after the WeWork debacle is perhaps something we should not be looking at. Is that a warning for investors going forward when trying to evaluate these IPOs? Well, look, I think that there are some fundamental differences between private investors, uh, the investors that have backed the WeWorks, Ubers, and, and Datadogs, and so, and so forth, and uh, public investors. And private investors tend to look more for vision, uh, strategy, a very long-term nature to assessing these businesses. Public markets uh, realistically are looking for nearer-term profitability. They're very different characteristics. And I think in that sense, private investors tend to be much more forgiving because their horizon is so long term, whereas public investors have a shorter term time horizon and therefore are more punishing to companies that can't show that profitability and uh, that uh, commensurate growth rate with margin structure. So really, that's where the rubber meets the road. In some sense, when you know, we do a lot of early stage investing, and when you do early stage investment, it's like having a little kid. You know, every kid that's born looks like they're going to be an NFL star or they're going to be smarter than Einstein. And then at someday they're 21 years old and the rubber meets the road. And that's that's the equivalent of a company going public. And so at that point in time, companies have to show much more of an ability to, to, to shape themselves as long term businesses rather than promises or vision.